yo, 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 what's good, y'all? Y'all already know what it is, man. I gotta tell y'all about this, man. It's everybody that's gonna be on this ditty, man. Just the list of names is really extensive, man. Of course, y'all know that. I mean, since the early 90s, man. And here y'all go, man. I gotta keep this one real short and simple for y'all, man. Just do me one favor while I give y'all all this juicy information. Like, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Drop them comments below. Peace. Drum roll. Drake. Drake. Oprah. Oprah. J Lo. J Lo. A Rod. A Rod. Will Smith. <laughs> Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Snoop. Snoop. DJ Khaled. Well, Bianca, we're here at the Metropolitan Detention Center, the MDC. It's a federal jail that houses criminal kingpins and killers who are awaiting the resolution of their cases. Now, for the first time in his life, accused sex trafficker Sean Diddy Combs spent the weekend here behind bars in solitary confinement and on suicide watch. MDC is a tough place, so rough you can hear detainees shouting even on the streets. There are constant lockdowns due to violent outbreaks, but former detainees I spoke with tell me that the experience here for Diddy will be different. Like other first-time celebrity defendants, he's reportedly under suicide watch, basically naked except for hospital paper throwaway clothing and rubber shower shoes. He's under 24-hour watch and kept separate from all other inmates. He has a bed with a blanket and no pillow. There are no electronic devices, but if he's lucky, he'll have the use of a radio for a short time. After being denied bail twice by two federal judges, he's expected to stay here until his trial. And this could limit his ability to prepare his defense. Many criminal defense attorneys say he's fighting a mountain of evidence and tough prosecution from the government's all-female team. I spoke with federal trial attorney Philip Hamilton, and he tells me when a defendant is behind bars at MDC, it's much more difficult to work on their defense, no matter who they are. There is no private VIP area for lawyer consults. Here's what Hamilton told me. Even in terms of just being able to converse with his lawyer, he's going to be doing it down in the regular waiting room with everyone else. You know, I can tell you from my experience there, there were times when I would go to interview clients, let's say during the course of R. Kelly's trial, I would see him right there speaking with his lawyers, just the same as everyone else was down there speaking with their lawyers and visiting with their family members. Uh, there's no special wing. Now, other defense attorneys tell me that with this particular jail, there are other issues as well that present difficulties to putting together an effective defense, namely the lack of reliable Wi-Fi or high-speed Wi-Fi. And in a case like Diddy's, which prosecutors say has hundreds of terabytes of data involved in the evidence, that could present a real problem. Now, he can continue to appeal the no-bail decision, but that may take too long. We'll have much more for you on this on the Fox 5 News at 5. <laughs>
The FBI found a tunnel this morning at the mansion of famous rapper Diddy in Los Angeles. Agents were called to the scene after an anonymous tip from neighbors of the rapper, saying that something strange had been happening since he was arrested. When they arrived, the officers were greeted by Diddy's relatives, who seemed very nervous. They tried to block the agents from entering, but the FBI insisted and decided to conduct a search. Upon entering Diddy's bedroom, they noticed that the floor near the bed looked like it had been recently disturbed. One of the agents then moved the bed aside, and that's when they made an unbelievable discovery. An entrance covered only by a rug under the bed. Curious, the agents decided to go down the passage, but Diddy's sister started screaming desperately, begging them not to enter the tunnel. However, the officers went in anyway. The tunnel walls were freshly dug as the wet dirt showed. As they advanced, they found strange objects on the ground. The atmosphere grew heavier. With every step, the agents began to feel an eerie premonition coming from the end of the tunnel. And then, when they reached the end, what they saw left everyone in shock, and they immediately called for reinforcements. You won't believe what they found. Follow the page and comment Diddy to see part two. This is just, this, this, this is, this is just for inspirational motivation in this song, you know what I'm saying? You don't know a lot of black men that come from the hood that got an island. I got an island, it's called Love Island. So when I took you to Love Island, and then, and then you realize that, you know, the plane landed and then we had to float to another island. What was going through your head when we were going in? I was like, I'm gonna go to war by this nigga, he mad. <laughs> <laughs> What was your favorite time that I took you off the grid? Um, when you going off the grid with me, you got to go to sleep for a week. Yeah, it's definitely giving out sleep. I need the phone. I need the phone. I need the phone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Quincy, I know you have two phones, Quincy. Oh, there you go. That's what I love. So proud of you, Justin. Look at that. We got all the phones. I have everybody's phone. So we got two phones. This car, the car over there. How would you like to? The hottest ticket around. They won't even give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties no more. But we, we ain't gonna stop. We gonna keep on having fun, bringing people together from all walks of life. You gonna hear about my party. They're gonna be shutting them down. They're gonna probably be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just because we wanna have a good time. You know, whenever you bring up a different element into people's environment, things that broaden people's horizon, people get intimidated. It's a lot of people out there that feel intimidated by it. It ain't nothing but, but, but breaking down racial barriers, breaking down generation barriers, people from all walks of life. Ron Perlman talking to Jay-Z, Jay-Z talking to, you know what I'm saying? It just goes on and on, you know, it's just, it's just like people from all walks of life connecting and getting together. Yeah. Your parties are the hottest ticket in town, people mm -hmm. dying to get into your party. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's cool, you know, it doesn't make me feel any way special, it doesn't make me feel like a bigger person, it just, it just makes me feel like I know how to throw a party. Hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. A few years ago, Dwight Howard invited me to um, a Diddy party. Um, it definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Diddy was giving me a house tour um, when I saw a thousand bottles of lube. He told me he was going to use them for a massive slip and slide, but I didn't buy it. Then he tried to convince me to play a game of strip horse. Um, he really wanted to see La Hammer. It's kind of crazy. Um... Let me ask you, do you think he's guilty in any percentage of the things that they say he's doing? Uh, he probably guilty of all that shit. Yeah. Uh, you know, but that's not to, to knock him because I believe everybody up there is guilty, just as guilty as he is. The people that sat there and watched it, the people that partook in it, the people that provided, the people that urged it on. The, or all these niggas that's coming to tell their story about what they saw, you guilty too, nigga. Because as long as you was benefiting and gaining from it, you didn't see a problem with it. Yeah. But now you, want, you got a story to tell. 
Gene Deal, you sat right there and watched the man do a whole bunch of fuck shit. But then you hit a breaking point and now you got a conscience. You, you should have checked that shit from the door. That's like with the Africa Bambata putting dick on, uh, what's his name? At, Hassan Campbell. Yeah, Hassan Campbell. <laughs> and then the nigga, the nigga supposed to be top security guard want to come. Nigga, you was watching a nigga go in and out the room the whole while. Why was your motherfucking conscience and your manhood and your, 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 your you know, being a solid motherfucker, where was it at then? Real so sick. everybody is guilty. Just like R. Kelly, everybody is guilty. With this case, I think it's going to be what people were kind of calling for in the R. Kelly case, I think that a lot Cassie of people... Cassie is not without blame. That bitch guilty, too. She just is guilty. Bitch was in love with a lifestyle. Bitch can't tell me you can't leave. Motherfucker, you go to the store. You can't... Man, get the fuck out of here. Can't I get it? Uh, bitch, uh, he made me suck his dick. Bitch, why you didn't bite it? Get the fuck out of here, man. What the fuck do I look like? Man, I've been doing, I've been in these streets. Man, you can miss me with the bullshit. If Diddy go down, the whole motherfucking thing need to be burnt down. Everybody included. Everybody that ever took a motherfucking picture with him, stood beside him, then had done a song with him, is culpable. So, Kat, I, I feel like Kat, Cassie is the one that broke the... Your life is in danger. Cause you know the secrets, who's involved in that little secret room you guys participating in. So, you know they're gonna get you if they can. It's a little crazy how Puffy get booted out the alcohol business and Jimmy Ivan steps in with Andre and and Snippy promoting it. It's never a good luck when it comes to the culture of hip hop and for our community, and our people. Huh, nice, the last one. In cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak-offs, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. God damn, this motherfucker had more lube than they got at Costco. I mean, what the hell? A thousand bottles of baby oil. He like his ass is well greased, glistening in the moonlight. This nigga's ass is ashy. I don't want. There's no ashy booties in in the puppy party. Grease this nigga down, oil him down, and rinse it off. He's got little chocolate chips and cocoa birds. Yeah, clean clean that nigga up and grease him. I got a thousand bottles. Grease him. Matter of fact, fill the whole bathtub up with baby oil and dip him. And no ashy cheeks in that crib. They was dipped. In, in hot baby oil. Well, I wonder, where's Jiggy? Anybody seen Jiggy? Anybody seen him? He didn't move quick enough. Now, Russell, Russell got the hell out. That nigga's on an island somewhere, just doing something. The Diggler, he ain't gonna make it, y'all. Here is my prediction. I predicted that he was going to jail before they took him. But anyway, he ain't gonna live. I, I, I'd be surprised if he lived past the end of, of September. Cause he is a dead man walking. Every every record label motherfucking executive and the motherfuckers in Black Rock or whatever the fucking corporation that is, they got money offering first motherfucker to kill that some is a hundred million dollars to your favorite family member's bank account, offshore, overseas, untraceable, six banks that way. This nigga ain't gonna make it. And it's gonna be the end of the story because we all waiting on the other names involved. You ain't gonna hear them. Guarantee you, you ain't gonna hear them. Yeah, them feds, they gonna take that money and run. There's case closed, Diddy's dead. And now they gonna auction off all his mansions because the feds now own all of his record label and all that shit. Because, you know, a RICO act, they took all this shit. Houses, cars, jet, all that shit. P. Diddy, Sean Combs, Nut Hairs, Diddy, Love, you know, all, 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 all of them motherfuckers. Uh, 
All of them are locked up in jail and they ain't getting out because the judge has denied all of them bail. Love ain't getting out, Diddy ain't getting out, John ain't getting out, none of them is getting out. I bet you he ashy now because ain't no baby oil in that penitentiary. This is ashy like a mother a boy, goddamn boy, wait till they put you in population. That little booty hole of yours is gonna be red hot. Woo! They got they got some long pipe waiting on you in there, boy. <laughs> Ain't gonna be none of them little rap. No, 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 sir. You get murder one motherfucking murder one. Then they they like some of that man booty. Yeah, take that, take that. Oh, they gonna take it. They're gonna take it on the regular. Well, at least he gonna save money in there. He ain't gotta pay for no sex workers. Cause they working that sex in there. It ain't gonna be no take that, take that. It's gonna be took that, took that, took that, take that, take that, take that. Took that, took that, took, took, took that. Whoa, fire. Doom, doom, doom. That asshole's on fire. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fire. Ow. <laughs> Get ready to wear a miniskirt. This nigga is guilty of what? Getting booty? Getting booty is not illegal. But the kidnapping, holding on to that booty, and forcing it, that's illegal. And that's why the in jail. It truly is about the Benjamin, yeah. as we see. Oh, yes, he, he's glittering. He's glittering. He's glittering. Yeah. Well, now, when we come back, we're going to talk more with Puffy, and if you want to hang out, more than welcome to stick around, my brother. Oh, All right? We'll be right back with more right after this. Fresh off the guard stage. This is my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and... I mean, damn, pause, but like, just out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early with me, and now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world, and I'm Yo, like, what, what the, the fuck did Puff just, just say? Nobody's gonna acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the Frosted Flakes and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was fucking stupid. Listen, having a good time. Are you usher made in the yo? Many celebrities have reacted to Kevin Hart being caught on camera in Diddy Freak Off video in the middle of Diddy's trial. First, Will Smith said, Is the whole of the industry in on this or something? Crazy. Next, The Rock said, Wow, I didn't see this coming for sure. Next, Rihanna said, Insane. Next, Eminem said, Seems so many people in the industry have things they should be sorry for. Next, Chris Rock said, I think it's important that people only comment when we see the full story and know everything that has happened. And finally, Drake said, I'm gonna just take a seat and watch this unfold. Kevin has gone viral after a video surfaced of him taking part in one of Diddy's infamous freak-off parties. Fans were stunned to see Kevin hosting the party in the video standing next to two women in a bathtub when one of the women's hair catches fire and the video ends. The video has surfaced as fans attempt to find out if any more celebrities are involved in Diddy's crimes after he was arrested following two raids on his properties in Los Angeles and Miami, where the freak-off parties were hosted. Fans have slammed Kevin saying that there is no way he could have attended the parties without knowing what was going on. They say hosting the party means he would have seen all of the actions Diddy has been accused of doing to the women in the case. They say that he has likely kept quiet about it in order to protect his own image and protect Diddy from further scrutiny. Other fans have said that this kind of party is normal for celebrities and there was no way Diddy was going to commit crimes in front of an audience. They think that it is likely Kevin never saw any wrongdoing and probably had no idea about Diddy's crimes. They think that fans have taken the video out of context and are just looking for an excuse to involve other celebrities in the case. Celebrities seem to be shocked that Kevin was involved, but aren't surprised that another big name has been exposed for attending the parties. One fan said, Will Smith's reaction sums it up perfectly. It's mind-boggling how many people were seemingly involved in Diddy's parties. It makes you wonder if this kind of behavior is more widespread in the industry than we realize. It's a sad reality check. Another fan said, Drake's response is typical. He's just sitting back and watching the drama unfold, probably hoping it doesn't splash onto him. It's cowardly. He should speak up and condemn this kind of behavior. For this video's comment question, who else do you think was involved? Before you go, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for daily news updates on your favorite celebs. Thanks a lot for watching. I know your deepest secrets.
I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got where you are, how you stepped on the many people, Beyonce, how you guys ended Carrie Hilson's career because she said something about you. What is it about this marriage that's so special that you would fight this hard to, to save it? Well, it's my soulmate, it's a person I love, you know, and you, and you, you can be in love with someone, you can love someone and you not, and if you haven't experienced love and you don't understand it and you don't have the tools to move forward, then you're gonna have complications, period. For us, we chose to fight for our love, for our family, to give our kids a different outcome. Hey folks, buckle up for some juicy gossip because it seems like the drama train has pulled into the station once again. You won't believe what's been making the rounds lately. Rumors of Beyonce's ex-bodyguard dropping some seriously scandalous footage involving none other than Queen Bey and Diddy. Yeah, you heard that right. Grab your popcorn and get ready to dive into the chaos because this- See, like, when Diddy fucked Carl Winslow, we was at the party, uh -huh. and you know, we just chilling and shit like that. And me, he up my and childhood every, when he told me every, that. everybody know me, right? Right. I'm a I'm a goofy oh, nigga. I'm funny and stuff like yeah. that. So I hear a nigga <laughs> just wearing out some shit. I'm like, huh? <laughs> like hearing that, I'm like, on six oh, who's wearing this bitch out? Right. Nigga, I kick in the door. Boom. Kick in the door. Nigga, I seen. I look. I seen Carl Winslow. Put yeah, his that's head the up. father. Ain't that the Big father from oh, like, from Family Matters? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No way. I'm, oh, I'm, the dad. The dad. Oh, the dad. The dad. The dad. I swear to God, dead homie. They blew a crib. So when I see, <laughs> wow. I see, I seen that. Man. And then, so who who was piping? Car, uh, Diddy. Yeah, yeah, Diddy was. So when, when when I see when I seen that, cuz right, Diddy came back and he he was telling me he was like, it's nothing more enjoyable than having a man do something for some money. I'm like, cuz that shit crazy. Oh no, nah, that's wild, bro. And she showed it to me. You saw that. Nosy showed it to me. Yeah, I did. Once I went out into the world and I saw what people, you know, how people feel about my parents. Because you're, you're going to be a big voice for the future. And I, I need them to know what the dangers are. Absolutely. Hold on to your seats, folks, because we've got some jaw-dropping gossip that's going to shake Hollywood to its core. Have you heard the latest shocking claims about Will Smith? The legendary actor's pristine public image is in shambles after explosive allegations from Jaguar Wright. She's spilling all the tea about Will's alleged troubling interactions with minors. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. The Smith family's reputation is crumbling with whispers of Jada's potential indifference or even complicity. How deep does this scandal go? What dark secrets are the Smiths hiding? Stay tuned because this video dives into the scandalous details you won't believe. In regards to how do we present that to people, you know? As the story unfolds, one can't help but wonder how much more there is beneath the surface of Will and Jada's unconventional marriage. Their relationship, described as a partnership of transparency, defies the typical Hollywood mold. Interestingly enough, this so-called transparency has done little to quell the incessant rumors that have swirled around them for years. Could it be that their unique arrangement was merely a facade to hide deeper, darker secrets? I made a promise that there will never be a reason for us to get a divorce. We will work through whatever. Jada's revelation about their separation since 2016 adds another layer to the mystery. Despite presenting a united front, their decision to live completely separate lives for nearly a decade suggests that there is much more than meets the eye. Was this separation a strategic move to protect their public personas while indulging in secret lives behind closed doors? Some insiders hint at wild clandestine parties where anything goes and morality is left at the door. Jada Pinkett Smith, that's f***ed up. Seriously. So Justin Timberlake's daughter just came out and said Justin Timberlake has been essaying her over a decade and got her pregnant and the mother knew and just covered it up with money and said that she will be dropping more proof later on in the week. Came out that Mary J. Blige used to essay this little 15 year old boy back in the day and used to fly him out whenever she got a chance. And allegedly there was another 15 year old boy she was doing the same thing to around the same time. Diddy drops an apology video a day after the video comes out that he's uh, caught beating Cassie's ass in the hotel hallway. And all of this information comes out three days apart. All of this. I don't know what is going on. I don't know who to believe at this point. I think that all of our favorite celebrities is just just slowly but surely. This is the year that like we just need to stop saying who our favorite celebrity is, whoever it is, because at this point, Stevie Wonder about to get caught in some shit. If we're going to cancel everybody that did some fuck shit. We have to cancel the entirety of the entertainment industry.
We can't support nothing Nickelodeon. Can't support anything that Epstein had his hands on. Can't support nothing that R. Kelly did. Can't listen to Tory Lanez. Can't listen to Mary J. Blige. Can't listen to nothing Diddy had his hands on. And now Justin Timberlake can't even listen to Drake no more without feeling weird. We just gotta start over. We need new celebrities. We, cause we, what, what are we gonna do? Like, what the fuck? Can we please sign some people and make some people famous and put them in the entertainment industry that don't like touching kids and essaying people? Sean Diddy Combs did a 180 on his friend with Donald Trump. When Trump became president, things went south, and a lot of his old friendships fell apart, including the one with Diddy. In a 2020 chat with Charlemagne the God, the rapper talked about his concerns if Trump got another term in the 20s and 20 election. If this man is elected, we're not just gonna sit back and watch anymore. We're not afraid of anyone. We're gonna stand up and speak out. We're on the brink of a race war, Diddy said. This came at a time when the Black Lives Matter movement was gaining steam in response to police brutality and the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Combs kept on slamming his old buddy and Trump's controversial views during the interview, saying, guys like Trump need to be kicked out. That kind of thinking is seriously dangerous. With the 2020 election looming, the rapper felt it was crucial to back Trump's opponent, Joe Biden. We don't really have a choice, he said. You can say what you want about Biden. I'm not crazy about either choice, but hey, we got to get him in there and then we got to keep him on track. Combs' interview drew a clear line in the sand, making it known that his friendship with Trump was done. Before the feud between Sean Diddy Combs and former President Donald Trump, the rapper was kind of open to the idea of letting the businessman back into his circle. Combs wasn't totally shutting Trump out when he became president in 2016, even though Trump's campaign was full of controversy. During an appearance on The Late Late Show with James Corden in 2018, Combs spilled the beans that he and Trump used to be tight enough that Trump even showed up at his 30th birthday bash via billboard. Things had definitely shifted, but he did confess that he'd be open to sitting down and having a chat with Trump. I'm not opposed to talking to anybody if it's for the greater good. Times are crazy, Diddy said. It's tough to speak up and make a difference right now. I'm focusing on leading by example. Sometimes it's a major distraction, but other times it's a wake-up call for us to take responsibility for the future of America and the world. Their chances of being friends again were even slimmer when Combs slammed Trump in his 2020 interview with Charlemagne They God, going as far as to label him dangerous. Trump and Combs' friendship has definitely been a roller coaster over the years, but it looks like they're permanently done with each other. Meanwhile, Donald Trump Jr. also dropped a pretty interesting comment, caught everyone off guard. Donald Trump Jr. said that Kim Porter, who was dating Sean Diddy Combs for a long time before she died, was scared of Diddy. He also said he doesn't think she really died from pneumonia. The ex-president's oldest son, who's 46, talked about some rumors on the Academics podcast this week. He said his ex-wife Vanessa was tight with Porter, who passed away in 2018. Trump Jr. remembered his childhood in New York City, saying he used to bump into celebrities all the time, before politics when he used to get invited to the cool person parties. I'm not part of the club. And a lot of you listening to me right here, right now, you're not part of the club either. And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of their fucking club. That pisses them off. What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got to deal with. You know who they are, and they definitely know who they are. Um, a lot of people would be like, what, who, who, who? Come on, man, stop playing. The other freedom I see in the album is just a freedom for couples who have gone through something. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. You know, it's almost a cliche, you know, the celebrity couple, you know, they get together, they break up, you know, I'm like, well, who else are they gonna go out with? But for some reason, you took an unprecedented stand to fight for this marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, to fight for it mm -hmm. and to put it all out there. What is it about this marriage that's so special that you would fight this hard to, to save it? 
well, it's my soulmate, it's a person I love, you know, and you, and you, you can be in love with someone, you can love someone. And you I love Diddy. Working for Diddy for six years trained me to have to be perfect. Working 20... for Diddy? Absolutely. I love Diddy. <laughs> Don's never been wider. I love Diddy. <laughs> you know, he's a good friend of mine, he's a good guy. He expects... Is he a good guy? I don't want to answer that oh, question. Oh, well, I, I think he's a good guy, I'm going to stick up for him. You'll nah. definitely be upset because you'll be outstanding, <laughs> motherfucker. That was, that was just, <laughs> you the man, little <laughs> Nigga, start working out, though. Just start, nah, like, get in the gym, little nigga. Something. You know something? I ain't got to work out neither. You, but you know something? My thumbs are so strong from counting all that paper. But y'all, hold on a second. <laughs> stop. Look at the stop. You got to do this. Do I work? Do I work? Do I work? If you ain't have enough style to give me a pair of Reeboks, I asked you for a pair of Reeboks today. You, you ain't got no clip. Yeah, fresh. You ain't even hooked me up. You'll have in the morning. Hey, thank you. A boxer. Hey, yo, check this out. This is Diddy. This is that boy they call Diddy. I'm here in the biggest. This is not even. This is just the play around mansion. Believe that. This boy yeah. is really for real. He's number uh -huh. one stunner. I and gave, guess what? He yo, gave. He yeah, passed yeah, it, down pass it to him. You know what I'm saying? I was the number one stunner. I'm a. I'm a. I'm like a superior stunner now. You know, I'm gonna graduate to my master's degree of stunning. <laughs> and, and you. And he the number. He's the one that's. You know how you have. I'm like Kennedy. You feel me? And he like Clinton. I was the yeah, president for shit. It. He a man, though. Yeah. That's OG there. I'm just we, we check this out. But, at, but at the end of the day, we it's in my we we, we we it's all one, one and this we in his mansion. It's one of many. He owned Believe the whole it, motherfucking dog. block. God damn. <laughs> but yo, check this out. Cash money bad boy and we Believe won't that. stop. Yeah, yeah. Word on the street is Diddy made that video after clapping Meek with 20 bottles of that Johnson & Johnson. Anyway, going back to that audio tape, everybody initially thought it was leaked by Diddy's ex-bodyguard, because he made an entire video explaining how he recorded the tape. According to him, he recorded the audio during one of Diddy's freak-off parties a few years ago. He said he overheard the noise, so he went to find out what was really happening by leaning by the door. And that's when he realized that Meek was getting manhandled by Diddy, so he decided to record it as evidence. However, according to Jaguar Wright, Nicki Minaj was actually the one who recorded it, and she paid this ex-bodyguard to take the fall for the leak so it don't get traced back to her. Jaguar claimed Nicki recorded it back when she was dating Meek, and that's the reason why she broke up with him. Jaguar even went as far as revealing the exact location that the freak-off happened that night. She said that the reason why Nicki didn't release this earlier is because she was scared that Diddy would attack her. But now that everything has been exposed, she decided to finally release it. Man, uh and it milk running the well, talking about expensive pain? No. His Wait, this is Philly you're talking about now. Wait a minute, Jack. Fuck me. Wait a minute. He's a fucking fruit loop. He did he five. This is Philly. He's a deep fried period. He did he five. He did he fried. He the did he do our bop. Fuck me. Real rap. You think that audio that they put out was real? Yeah, that was fucking real. Nikki put that out to here. That, that Nikki recorded that at the freak off in the Calabasas. She's been waiting to drop that shit with Meek. She just wasn't going to tell nobody it was Diddy. But now that Diddy out there, why not? Oh, shivering like a little bitch. Uh, shaking, uh, shitting throwing up and going through major withdrawals. And so he don't even have time to concentrate on what's really happening to him right now because he's feeling like a piece of shit right now. And that's unfortunate for those of y'all say, oh, he wasn't on drugs like that or trust me, when they arrested him, he had uh, some form of narcotics on him when he got arrested. And if anyone can tell that he had a a drug issue, then you just being naive or you just a stupid motherfucker. So that would be my take. That would be my second part of my prediction or, or something that I try to help the brother by advising me. And it's obviously he didn't take my, uh, take my advice. Yeah. My last words to be, Stop. I did it. Yeah. <laughs>